and welcome back to another vlog installment of Sailing Kandava. And in this week's video, it's basically a continuation of where we left off last week. And that is basically trying to save some money by tackling some of these somewhat expensive maintenance jobs ourselves. Now, I don't know a huge amount about engineering, engines or mechanics, but I do know a thing or two about not being particularly wealthy. And so it's for that reason that I have learned how to give our engine a basic service every year. Now for us, a basic service consists of an oil change and an oil filter change. It consists of two fuel filter changes and bleeding the fuel, uh, an alternator belt change, a new impeller for the raw water and the removal, cleaning and the replacement of our engine's air filter. I know a bunch of you watching this video know an awful lot more about maintaining a marine diesel engine than I do. So if whilst watching this, you see something I could be doing better, maybe I'm doing it wrong or I could just improve what I'm doing. Or maybe you know of something that perhaps I haven't considered when it comes to doing an engine maintenance service, then jump in the comments, let me know, because I say it all the time, that really is for me, and I imagine a lot of people, where the real value in these videos lie, keeping it social. So uh, if anybody's watching this video and this is inspiring you to have a crack at maintaining the engine yourself, to try and save some money, or just learn your way around the engine a little bit better, uh, before grabbing the spanner and diving in and just copying what I do, again, jump in the comments, have a little look, see if anyone sort of corrected me on anything, and I think that'll just put you in good stead to tackle these jobs yourself. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. A couple of bits that I have purchased uh, from a company called Parts for Engines. This is a uh, an alternator belt, brand new alternator belt, and here we have a raw water impeller. And uh, again, you can see the name of the company there. Parts for Engines, amazing prices, and uh, I've used them and never had a problem. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna change is this alternator belt. Now, as part of my regular engine checks, I'm always looking for wear on the belt and, or uneven wear, but this, this alternator belt still looks in really good nick, but I'm gonna change it as, uh, as just, again, standard practice every year, and then I'm gonna keep this one as a spare, and then the spare that I've got from previous year, I'll throw away, because I don't need that many spare alternator belts. So in order to get this off, I have to loosen the adjustment on the alternator. That will come in, the belt will come slack, and fall straight off. All right, so after loosening the adjuster here at the bottom, if you can see just here, we've got this little, this uh, nut and bolt, which is 17 mil, and we're gonna need to loosen that, and then the alternator will start to move. The nut on the back of that, We'll hold this in place and then undo it from the front. Yeah, it doesn't need to move forward a great deal in order just to take the, uh, the belt off. There we go. Voila. Well, that alternator belt, to be honest, Looks almost as good as new, so that will make a decent spare. Take the new belt. We basically just reverse the process. You can just manually pull the alternator tight, screw the adjuster back in. What we want is just a very small amount of play in the belt. You don't want it too tight that it's going to snap but you don't want so much play that it risks uh, falling off or wearing unevenly or creating belt dust. So there'll just be a very small amount of movement in that. So we'll tighten up the adjuster, get the amount of adjustment one in it, and then we'll uh, fix it in place. All right, time to tighten. Okay, and on the back of the adjuster, and there you go. Very small amount of play in that now. So here we have the strainer for our raw water intake. I check this every time we start the engine, basically. Whenever we go anywhere, I just make sure it's not clogged up with any rubbish. If it is, I empty it. And uh, the water is pulled up, up into here, 
through here by this little thing here, which is the raw water pump. I'm gonna take the face of this pump off, and again, hopefully, the impeller is in one piece. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually turn off the raw water seacock. I wanna be careful not to lose any of these fixings down the bilge either. That would be a bad day. Let's get out. The good news is we're not missing any splines on that impeller. So given that we know we have no bits of impeller in our heat exchanger after disassembling it and cleaning it all out last year, that means the system is all most likely still clear. Result. Here's a couple of screwdrivers to sort of gently prise this out. I don't want to do any damage, so be careful you don't push too hard because this old impeller is going to become our spare impeller. Doesn't look too bad at all actually. It doesn't feel too brittle or stiff. Still got a lot of flex in there. I think I'll make a perfectly fine spare. Now where I put that spare brings me on to another subject. Now last week, not last week in video time, last week in real time, I did a huge project on the boat that I didn't think would be very interesting, so I didn't film it, but I shared what I did with the patrons, and it was what I call epic organisation. One of the biggest stress points that we have aboard Godoa is the amount of stuff that we cram into this little space, so when I want to find something, I'm not I'm not naturally the most organized person in the world ever. So I know we will have something somewhere and it'll involve turning the boat upside down trying to find it. And this was just no good. Luckily, we haven't had to find something in an emergency. And so basically, to cut a long story short, we measured the volume of all the spaces that we store everything in. We then went to a shop called Wilco. We bought a bunch of plastic storage containers that filled those volume spaces. We then designated zones for each of those areas, A, B, C, D, E. And then within those zones themselves, we basically removed everything that we have and filled them into boxes gradually. And every single item that went into a box, say box A1, then went onto a database. So after a very long, fairly tedious weekend last weekend, we now have an amazing database. So I know where everything is. I only need to find one box. I don't have to tear the place apart. This is a good thing. So I know that we have a spare impeller somewhere from last year's service. And so I'm gonna swap that one out for this one. And I don't have to rummage around trying to find it. Let me show you. Can you see that? Let me bring it a little bit closer. All right, so we're looking for our impeller bits and pieces. Uh, here we go, impeller loops, or the impeller there. B, B2. Everything is in alphabetical order. That's in zone B, box B2. Let's go to zone B. Zone B. And here are all the B boxes. B2, where are you B2? B2. So this is all our, our lubes and bits and pieces. I'm pretty sure they'll be, there we go, from last year, Parts for Engines. I'm not sponsored by Parts for Engines, but if anyone from Parts of Engines watches this and thinks maybe you'd like to sponsor us, then uh, get in touch. It'd be awesome. So we out with the old, in with the kind of not so new, but newer. There we are. All right, next up, fuel filters, primary and secondary. And if we have a little look where they are, fuel filters, fuel filters, fuel filters. That is section B, box B1. B1. There's a good reason I didn't order any fuel filters from Parts for Engines, and that's because, well, if you've been following for a while, you'd have seen in season one, we had some kind of epic catastrophe, for us at least anyway, with our engine, and it got completely clogged up with dirty fuel, and we were in a real pickle. So the next time we pulled into port, we basically liberated every fuel filter we could get our hands on, and we still have plenty left to this day. So all I need to do is remember where I put them. Okay, one primary. One fuel. 
So this is the one that I actually call the primary filter. Uh, I don't know if that's actually technically correct, but this is the, the filter that uh, filters out the larger particles. So I'm just gonna unscrew the top here. You'll probably get some fuel spillage just over the side. Take off the O-ring. O-ring looks in pretty good condition to be fair. And then this should just lift off. Put you over that. And then I also like to empty this. So this is the fuel that's sat in the water separator. I like to drain that down, then take this apart and give it a good clean as well since, since we're here. Slowly coming out of there. So. Looks like it is a bit cruddy. I've just removed the water separation part, and it does look. All right, we've taken off the water separator, and it definitely looks like there's a lot more crud build up in there than there was the last time we looked. So, yeah, give that a clean up. Is much better than we found it. That's more like it. All right, I'm gonna put this back together and then we'll pop the fuel filter in, move on to the next one. All right, one new filter. One freshly cleaned out housing. Oh, two else we need. Do you want to say hi to the camera? Hi everybody, <laughs> just writing postcards. <laughs> uh, there we go, and there's a new O-ring for our fuel filter. Yeah, so for those of you that don't know, over on our Patreon page, all the people that support both these videos and the development of the website and then the building uh, of our anchorages section, everything. Uh, basically, there's a whole bunch of people that support us and there's a group of those Patreons who we write to every month to give them a little bit of behind the scenes uh, of what's going on. So you can see behind the scenes. But if you didn't know about that, then uh, you can go check out our Patreon page and uh, find out for yourself. There's a bunch of exclusive stuff on there too. And uh, back to the engine. Have some fresh fuel. That's the right color. I'm gonna fill that up to about there. Pop that in. Tiny bit more. Right. With the fuel filter, you also get two new O rings. You've got this little tiny one here, and then this larger one here. So I just like to, again, just give them a little grease. And that one's going to sit just in there. Perfect. And then. This tiny little o-ring here, that basically replaces this little guy here. Out with the old tip as well. In with the new. Place down there. Because right. I am hyper paranoid. Now that we've changed the impeller on the wall water pump, I like to cover the engine in uh, salt off, just so that we don't get any seawater just rusting, rusting the engine prematurely. Okay, so next up is the secondary fuel filter. Do you call it the secondary fuel filter? That's this puppy here just underneath this little manual pump. And so we've got the fuel pump here that sends the fuel into the filter and this is the one we're gonna take off. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is turn the fuel supply off. This 
fuel filter is a Perkins original and uh, the Volvo Penta D255 is fundamentally a Perkins tractor engine so um, I don't have any issue using these and they're a fraction of the price of the Volvo official ones so more money saving tips you heard it here first gonna prime the filter with some fresh fuel basically just fill the fuel filter up the reason I like to fill this one right to the top is because it's going face up so if you're not clumsy which I often am then you can go on without spilling anything next thing we're gonna do is get rid of any of the air that's got trapped in the system so on our engine most all engines will have a bleed valve somewhere but on the Volvo Penta D255 we've got this little fixing here which we open that up, we open that up there, we don't need to go too mad with it. You'll see those bubbles starting to come out. And we basically want to just pump it until there's just liquid and no bubble. Next up is the air filter. And this is a reusable air filter, so we need to clean this one. So we're gonna take that off and then we need to find the air filter recharge kit. The air filter recharger is in section A, box A1. A1. Bingo. It's nice and straightforward. I'm gonna do this one outside because it involves a little bit of spraying. So I've got this KNN recharger kit. And for some reason, can you see that? It's come in, it's in German. Uh, and there are several other languages you can choose from. Not one of them, not one of them's in English. How rude. Luckily, I know how to use this. So, we've got two parts to this. Firstly, we have a degreaser and a cleaner and an oil. And what we're gonna do with the air filter is we're gonna cover the outside and the inside with a degreaser. We're gonna leave that for sort of half an hour or so, let the degreaser work its magic and sort of break its way in. And then we're gonna take a hose pipe and push him from the inside out. So we're gonna put the hose pipe inside here and, and spray outwards rather than the other way around. From the inside out, we're gonna wash this off. And But the reason we're spraying from the inside out is so we get all those little particles of grit and, and what hot and push them off of the uh, air filter rather than into the air filter because if you push them further into the air filter, then when the air filter's connected back to the engine, you then run the risk of those little bits going inside the engine. That's that's not what we want. So I'm gonna sit that down and let the uh, degreaser work its magic. All right, and now this has been left to soak. Hopefully the degreaser's broke everything down. I say I like to put the hose on the inside. Low pressure, not high pressure. We don't want to break down all the fibers. But just a nice low pressure to wash that all out. And again, I'm going from the inside out, not the outside in. Okay, right now I'm going to leave this to dry naturally. I'm not going to do anything to try and speed the drying process up. I'm not going to use a heat gun or anything like that at all. Again, I don't want to damage uh, any of the fibers on the air filter. So I'm just going to leave it, as I say, to dry naturally. Once it's finished drying, I then take the oil and I'm going to gently spray all of the outside of the air filter. I don't spray the inside, I just spray the outside and I don't go mad. I don't want to over oil it, but I just want to cover it. And when it's dry, you'll be able to see the coverage area much easier. So don't try and do it whilst it's wet. But then after it's dry and you've given it a spray, you simply attach it back to the engine and jobs are good. In. And that's it for this week's video and our annual engine service. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, hold on, how about something like changing the oil and the oil filter? Uh, we actually covered that in last week's video. So if you haven't seen that video yet, it's actually 
this one up here. Uh, and there's also an issue of the engine coolant. Now, this is actually something I do every other year. And last year we changed the engine coolant when we actually removed the heat exchanger and cleaned all the tubing out and put that back together. So that's not due until next year. But again, if you haven't seen the uh, heat exchanger cleaning video, it's actually this one here. And so hopefully there's something of use in one of those two videos for you. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it's inspired you to maybe have a crack at some of these jobs yourself, save some pennies, especially now and that seems to be more important than ever and it's not long now until we're out and about exploring some new anchorages again sharing them with you as we do on youtube in the most cinematic beautiful way that i know how and hopefully and maybe even more importantly on our anchorages page on the website and just a big thank you to everyone who supports us and helps us with building and growing and developing this page i hope it's going to be a resource that maybe in the future will be of some use if for no other reason then maybe it will just inspire you to pull into a couple of new spots if you create in and around this area and, uh, and maybe you're running out of ideas for places to go. Let us do the reconnaissance for you first and if you like the look of it, go check it out. But if you haven't seen the website, uh, I'll pop a link in the description. I'll pop a link for everything that's useful in the description below. And uh, yeah, go check the website out, go check the anchorages out, let us know what you think. And if there's any mistakes on any of those, any spelling mistakes, anything at all, then again, let me know and I will get around to it. All right, it's been a pleasure. See you guys next time. Bye for now.